Hi everyone, it's Dutch Reefer here and welcome to a new video in the Reef Keeping 101 series. In this video I will be telling you a bit more about coral placement. So the position that your corals should be in your tank based on two main variables. So these two variables are lighting and current. So if you have a reef tank, you might be aware that these two aspects are very important to creating a healthy reef tank. So first of all, the most noticeable will be the lights. A reef tank cannot thrive without a proper light above it. Now my tank has a Maxpec L165 LED fixture above it, so it's purely LED. But of course, there's a lot of other options as well ranging from full LED to T5 to even uh, metal halide uh, lights, which are a bit more old fashioned, but still doing the trick. When we're talking about current, there's two different types of current that I want to discuss. The first one is the return pump. So either if you have a sump or a, uh, an area in the back of your tank, which houses your equipment, there's always going to be some sort of return pump in your tank, which you can see the outlet valve right here, which is of course located when you have a sump in the back of the sump. Returning the water from the skimmer chamber, as you can see right here, back into the tank. So depending on the power of the pump that you have in here, mine's a JCOD DCP 4000 running at about 60%, you have at least some basic current in your tank already, but just a return pump is not enough in most cases. You might need some additional power heads in your tank, it's the second type of flow. And in my tank, those are two TMC reef tights. As you can see right here on this side. And also one on the opposite end. Right there. As you can see, I've placed them somewhat on different locations. So one is a bit more up, about two thirds into the tank and one is about halfway into the tank. The reason for this is to create a different kind of flow throughout the tank, throughout the day. So ideally, your return pump will be at full speed, or at least a constant speed, all day, so it can cycle the water from your sump to your display. And ideally, your uh, power heads inside your tank have a variable speed because that way it will create a very different flow in your tank during the day which your corals will appreciate since they will appreciate variable flow. Now I generally uh, separate the tank into three parts when putting corals into my tank. So that's the lower part, the middle part and the top and the reason for that we'll cover in the next segment so usually on the lower part of the tank there will be soft corals corals that need less light and not as much flow so for example ricordea which you can see right here or leather corals soft corals like this sarcophyton that you can see right here, trachyphilia, which you can see on the sand. Trachyphilia feel very comfortable on the sand. Or an elegance coral that you can see right here, which is also low in the tank. Typically, large polyp stony corals are located somewhat near the bottom of your tank. They don't need as much light as other corals do. They don't need as much flow. So that's why I place them on the bottom. The next there's the middle segment of the tank. And this usually also houses 
a mix of LPS and SPS and some other soft corals, for example these Discosoma or Zoanthus. Zoanthus can also appreciate quite a bit of light but don't need to be at the complete top of the tank. As you can see right here, some Ricordea as well, but also some SPS, like this Turbinaria or this small piece of Montipora hirsuta that you can see right here. Some Acanthostrea behind the Turbinaria, which you can see right here. These can also appreciate somewhat more light and somewhat more flow. Since most flow will be in the top area of the tank, so the top two thirds of the tank. And of course, the further you go up, the more the light intensity will increase. So if we move to the top of the tank, typically there will be more large or sorry soft small polyps tony corals so sps these typically have much smaller polyps as the name already indicates which extend out of the skeleton of the coral itself i'll try to zoom into this caliendrum which shows it really nicely so you can all these see these all these very small polyps coming out of the uh, the calcium made skeleton and same goes for other montipora species acropora species which i only have two of currently which are this one on the right and this milipora on the left these can appreciate quite a bit of light and also quite a bit of flow and that's why they are located near the top of the tank of course, there's other types of SPS as well, like for example, this Stylophora that you can see right here, which is bluish. This Anacropora, which is right here. Or this Sifostrea, which is attached to the back of the tank. People often ask me, how do you attach these corals to the back of the tank? Um, I'm almost, I always use uh, the same brand of glue which is Seacum Reef Glue uh, and you can use that to directly attach corals to any surface. I think the only exception is very new glass so if your glass is still as clear as this then it won't stick but as soon as there's a bit of coralline algae on there or that type of algae then it will uh, definitely stick so you can try to um, to glue any type of coral which is not too heavy on the back uh, pane of your, uh, of your tank. So that covers the main part of this video. So when you buy new corals, try to follow these guidelines. So the large polyp stony corals go somewhere in the bottom half of the tank. The small polyp stony corals go somewhere in the top half of the tank and try to play around with your current a bit so that all your corals in your tank uh, feel, seem nice, seem to do okay. Um, you can see if a coral is doing okay by uh, the fact if it's extending its polyps or not. So if you buy a new coral which was looking awesome in your local fish store and then has been doing quite bad for a couple of days in your own tank, consider to move it around. So you can to do, th do two things. Either you can move the coral to a different spot, that's the most flexible, because you can just try a couple of locations and see where it does best. But if you see more than one coral not doing too well, you can also consider changing up your flow. For example, in my large tank, I have uh, added two more gyres. So there's uh, four max spec gyres in there at the moment and two uh, JCOD SOW pumps, so there's six uh, six power heads in the tank just to get all the current moving in the right direction and making sure there's no dead spots and that's the last sub subject that I want to finish this video with uh, the worst thing that you can have in your tank is a dead spot which is essentially an area in your tank where there's no flow at all 
that's where all the detritus and all the uh, nutrient holding stuff will uh, will end up and that's not what you want you want all the water in your tank moving around as much as possible so it will eventually go back into your overflow box back into your sump and filtered out through your skimmer or on the bottom of your sump where you can just siphon it off instead of remaining in your tank so always try to make your restructure as open as possible try to create some space even on the back side of it so never just drop your rocks in your tank and try to build them on the back of your tank always try to create an open rescape which will let through as much current as possible for your corals to thrive so that's what i wanted to tell you today i hope you enjoyed this video um, that's it for now so i'll see you in the next one for now stay safe out there and uh, see you next time Bye-bye.